Well, hello and welcome to At Home today. We're so glad you could be with us. It is a cold, cold day here in Pittsburgh. I tell you, uh, yesterday was cold. Last night was really cold. And you know, when, when it gets cold like that, I immediately think chilly. Because you know what, that's one of those things that gets hot and when you eat it, it kind of warms you all up. It, oh, it just sets well. And it's easy to do, you can make a big pot of it. We're gonna do that today, so stay tuned. We're gonna put a little twist on it, make it something more than just, just a bowl of chili. First, I wanted to tell you about something. You know, my parents are both gone. They've gone to be with the Lord. And when you clean out the house, you know, where they've spent their lives, there's so many little mementos that mean so much. And you think, oh, I know, they were here when somebody gave this to them or they, this happened, the circumstances around all of that. Well, this is something, this little sign right here. This was something that was a part of our house since I was a little child. I can't remember when they got it. And I was fascinated by this because this brought me such comfort as a kid. It says, Jesus never fails. What a powerful, powerful message. And so I ended up, I thought, well, I'd like to have this. So it, it hangs at our house now. I can remember it hanging in the living room at my mom and dad. Sometimes when they moved, it hung in the bedroom, it hung in the hallway. This hangs in our house today. And so I took it down thinking, wonder how old this is? Because you can tell it's like it, the sketching and everything is not modern day. And I looked on the back and on the back it says, Reverend William Casley gave me this in 1937, before I was born, a long time before I was born. Reverend William Casley was the minister that dedicated me to the Lord when I was a baby. The only, the last person that he ever dedicated was me, before he passed away and went to be with the Lord. And in 1937, he gave this to my, to my dad. My mother and dad were just married two years then. You know, I'm saying all that to say this. This message, Jesus never fails. It never gets old. It's as true today as it was the day that this plaque was made. This message, if you can get a grasp on it and realize it in your heart, Jesus will never fail you. No matter what's going on in your life, he is a God that can be trusted He's a God that can be believed in. He will never fail you. This is a proven fact down the annuals of time. Jesus never fails. In 2004 or 1937, Jesus will not fail you. We're going to pause now to have our at-home hint. Come right back and we're going to get our chili started. We'll see you in just a minute. Here's today's at-home hint. When serving saucy, cheesy, or layered baked dishes like lasagna, allow it to cool and set for a few minutes before cutting. This makes cutting and serving much neater. If you have an at-home hint, a favorite recipe, or just a friendly greeting you'd like to share, we'd like to hear from you. Post it in the comments of this video or visit our Facebook page. All right, we're gonna begin our chili. And in here I have about a tablespoon of oil and a little bit of butter because I like that foundation, that flavor. And you want to get that melting, very good. You need a tall pot for this because I figure if you're going to go to the trouble of making chili, make a lot, freeze it, give some to the neighbor, whatever. Or you can cut the portion in half. If you live alone, you might want to think about that. But to this now, I'm going to add two pounds of ground chuck, all right? And we're just going to drop that in there because we want that to brown up pretty good. So you're gonna immediately start to break it apart with the spatula. And it doesn't have to be totally, completely brown, but the browning, it really adds flavor to the chili. And I, I really, Paul and I, we like chili. We have, you know, people think of chili as like, a, oh, it's a quick supper, it's nothing special. But you can make it special. And you can make it special by adding things to it or serving it in different ways, which we're gonna show you today. Is a, this is my favorite way of having chili. Let me get the, the fire up nice and hot in this so we can get it browned off. And I'm gonna go over the ingredients while this is browning so you get an idea. Two pounds of ground chuck. I want you to see it has very little fat in it. Uh, you don't want ground steak ground round. That's too lean. You need a little bit of fat to flavor it. 
But this is beautiful ground chuck, and I think of the proportion of fat to the proportion of meat should be up there in the 90s, but it should not be 100% um, without fat. You need some fat in there. Okay, so we're gonna let this brown up. While it is, let me walk you through some of the other ingredients. Okay, now we have green pepper, we have garlic, onion. Don't wanna put that in yet because until this browns, you put the onion in there now, that's gonna get burned. So will the garlic. So you want this to get a head start. You want the meat to start to brown. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back to that later. And over here we have, uh, what is that one? This would be the thyme or oregano. Oregano and thyme. And we have chili powder. We have all kinds of tomatoes, different kinds of tomatoes. We have stewed tomatoes. And I like them because they have some celery and onions and green peppers in them already, even though we're gonna add some more. It just helps to enhance the flavor. We also have a large can of tomato sauce. I like that idea. We have a large can of crushed tomatoes in tomato puree. We have a large can of tomato juice. A lot of tomatoes here. If you don't like tomatoes, don't, don't eat the chili. It's not gonna work. And in this one, it's the, the milder diced tomatoes and green chilies. When you see chili, you think hot. It just adds a little slight tang. Really, it's not bad. And then, of course, our light red kidney beans. All of this goes into chili, okay? Now, let me brown this up some more. Get it going here. This should brown off very quickly, and there shouldn't be a lot of grease. If, if you use a cheaper uh, cut of meat, and there is a lot of grease, you want to pour some of that off before you start to add the other things. I'm going to add my onion now, because this onion is about a cup or a large onion that's chopped. And we're going to add garlic. You wanna make sure you get all that because that's gonna really add the flavor. You know what, don't, don't get wild with the garlic because everybody, I know a lot of people, if you really like it, you really like it. And you think, oh, more garlic, more. But if you don't like it that well, and somebody's got so much in it that that's all you can taste, that's not pleasant. It doesn't taste good. So be thoughtful a little bit about the other guy that's gonna eat. You can also add more at the table with your, from yourself, you know, just with the garlic powder or garlic salt. Okay, now we're gonna do the green peppers. They're in there. And that would be one large green pepper chopped. Okay, and now we're just mixing this around. This is gonna get some beautiful color to it. Wish you could smell it, it's a wonderful smell. I like the colors, the fresh onion, the fresh green peppers, okay. And what I like to do before I add the tomatoes, I like to add the spices now. Because when you're browning the meat, if you add the spices, the spices are cooked into the meat. They're not floating on the tomato sauce or the tomatoes that you use. So it's better to put them on the meat, okay? So we're gonna start with our oregano and basil, okay? And some thyme. I guess that's time. Not quite sure. Oh, this smells like the oregano. Okay, must be ground. And then, this we call a chili powder, okay? We took a vote. Everybody says go big on chili powder. Actually, I have two teaspoons, but we're probably gonna go a little bit more because these are all guys on the crew. So there's one, there's two. Go three? Okay, we voted for three. All right, if it's really hot, Mike gets to eat it all. <laughs> and that's what he's counting on, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, one more live dangerous, he's, then he has assurance that nobody will be eating it. Okay, but you know what, you can do, you can add uh, hot sauce to it when you sit at the table and you're eating it, you can put some more on that way. This is coming along beautifully. Now, I'm gonna do some salt. Okay, and some black pepper which also adds to that. Now, my secret ingredient, you say, that's stupid, Arlene. When there's tomatoes, sometimes the tomato leaves a bitterness. So I put about a third of a cup of sugar. Just put it in there too, okay? And you can adjust your seasonings after you get it going and after it starts tasting a certain way. Think, well, you know, I think I need a little bit more hot stuff. Look at this, is this beautiful or what? Ha, chili, chili, in the, in the works, 
Okay. Now, I'm going to start to add. We'll do this stewed tomatoes. And don't worry about them. Oh, you know, they're in chunks. If you want to, if you want to get in there and mash them, you can, but they'll cook down. They'll cook. This doesn't cook like forever and ever either. You don't have to cook this for two hours or something. Don't have to. But just be careful when you're emptying out these cans so that when you have a high heat, you don't want it to splash up on you. Here's our tomato sauce. Uh huh. We gotta get those chilies in there. If we don't get anything else in there, the chilies have to get in because boy, do they add a nice dimension of flavor. Now, the only thing I would not put in here now would be the kidney beans because I don't want them to be mush, okay? So as I'm working with this and I'm stirring and this is gonna come to a real wonderful boil, just cooking, cooking. You want this to cook for about a half hour, good half hour. If you like it longer, go longer. Look how nice and thick it is already. That's what I like. Now we do the tomato juice. That adds such flavor. A large tomato juice. Told you this makes a lot. It really does. But again, if you're going to the trouble of making it, why not make a lot and freeze? That's the easiest way for me to, to get some work done when you know, you know you're going to have a busy week ahead. Make a big pot of chili. Lots of ways to serve it, too. All right, let me see. So these two, we're going to let this cook for about a half hour. We come back, we're going to make Mexican cornbread. We'll be right back in just a minute. Do you love watching At Home with Arlene Williams? Then be sure to check out our new YouTube channel. It's filled with classic episodes from over 20 years of At Home, and more videos are added each day. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Well, if you're just joining us, you've missed us putting together tasty Arlene's Tasty Chili. And this, this chili, I'm telling you, if you ever try it, you're really, really going to enjoy it because it's already nice and thick. We're going to bring it up to a boil, let it boil down for a while. And while we're waiting on that, don't want to cover it because I kind of like it to cook down and thicken up a little bit. Uh, while we're waiting on that, we're going to make our Mexican cornbread, okay? This is simple, too. I kind of like um, the crunchier taste of a corn muffin or something like that when you have chili because you could serve it by putting a square of cornbread, split it open, put it in your bowl, put chili on top of it. That's a good one, too. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to preheat our oven, first of all, at 450, which is really, really hot, okay? And we have about a cup and a half of the yellow cornmeal. We have a half a cup of flour. Okay. Uh, buttermilk. I need my buttermilk. I don't see that. We have buttermilk. Let's see. Right in here, the bottom. Yeah. We'll do a half a cup of buttermilk. Okay. Do about a half of that. You know, buttermilk makes the absolute best biscuits. If you haven't had buttermilk biscuits, you gotta try them. All right, now we're going to, let me get this here. Now I like to mix those two up together first, and we're gonna add some baking powder, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, okay? And some oil. This is about a fourth a cup of vegetable oil. You would not use olive oil. That's way too heavy for something like this. And, of course, to give it a little tang, we're going to add some chili powder. Can't get away from that with this meal today. You know, it's a hot thing to do. And this is some green chilies that you buy in a can, and they have been uh, drained well, okay? Actually, you just add everything at one time to this, which is the kind of cooking that I like too. And a small can of golden cream style corn. Give it a little body. You know, I never cared, well, Paul doesn't care too much for Mexican food. And I've stayed away from it because you tend to shy away from the stuff that your husband doesn't like because what are you cooking for if he's not happy? But when I get out and I get tasting some of this stuff, I love it. And I think, well, how come I don't make it at home? And then I remember he doesn't like it. But one of the things I'm really getting into is Southwestern cooking which is, it's, it's great. I like the chilies. I like the, 
the cornbread, the tortillas and stuff. It's just a whole different way of eating, but it's good, it's delicious, okay? Now we're gonna add our two eggs. This would be large eggs. And this is cheddar. You can use Monterey Jack, cheddar, whatever you wanna use. It all works good. And that's only about half a cup, okay? That goes in there, and then our buttermilk. Ah, oh. now, this is one of those things that I like in stuff, but to sit and have a glass of buttermilk, not one of my favorite things. And I found that either people really, really like it or they really, really don't. There's no middle of the road with buttermilk. But it's supposed to be good for you, I guess, you know, and I guess it's all in what you're used to. Funny how that we, we get our preferences and our likes and dislikes from the way we were raised a lot of times. My mother was not a big fish person, in fact, she refused to cook fish because she didn't like the smell. Now, my dad, he liked fish, and poor thing, he'd get a can of sardines or something, and we as kids, you know, we're like, oh, dad, get them sardines out of here. They really don't smell, and you know, dad would just sit there and he'd eat them, and my mother, she wasn't too happy, but she wouldn't say anything, you know. She would not say a word. But, uh, so as a result, if you're not eating a lot of fish when you're a kid, you you kind of have to acquire a taste when you get older because you know it's good for you and you should be eating it. So that's one of the injustices. You gotta, as parents, I think we need to acquaint our children, grandparents too, with all the kinds of foods so that they can at least taste them and see what they like or what they don't like. Now, we wanna make sure that's completely and totally mixed up, which it is. You have your pan here, it's greased, very, very well greased. Okay, and then we just put that in. You know, I've made regular cornbread too without the Mexican part of it. And I love it when there's corn in it because I just like that extra crunch that it gets in there. Oh, makes such good cornbread. If you don't like the chili, don't put the chili powder in there. It would be all right without it. Some of us would think it wouldn't be as good. Right, Michael? Uh, this is a guy that sits and eats his chili with a the chili powder sitting right by his plate, so he knows whereof he speaks. <laughs> we also know that he really likes that a lot. All right, 450 oven. Now remember, you want to be sure that that oven's that hot. Don't put it in, think, oh, it's 350, and then, oh, I should have, and then you turn it to 450 and stick it in. Has to be that hot right at the top. So, here we go. And that's gonna bake 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, and I'm gonna set the little, Timer, isn't this cute? Somebody gave this to me. We have all kinds of things on this set anymore. Never know, little ladybug. Okay, I'm gonna stir. Look already how different this has taken that look. Oh, can you believe that? That look wonderful. All right, we have just a little bit more time for this to cook. As Soon as the, the cornbread's done, we're gonna be in the dining room, sitting at the table, and I'm gonna tell you how you can make this better than just a bowl of chili. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Just go to ctvn.org slash at home to get all the recipes from today's show for free. That's right, no subscriptions. They're available online at no cost and more are being added each day. So join us at ctvn.org slash at home to get today's recipes now. Well, today we've made my famous tasty chili. And I told you I was gonna show you how to make it, not just a plain bowl of chili, here it is here. In this, look at this, oh, oh, we just sprinkled a little bit of cheese on the top. And this is about uh, two thirds of what it makes. There's still a little bit more, so you would have plenty. Okay, let me show you what we're gonna do. We've cooked some penne pasta, we have it right here. And you wanna serve this in a bowl, like a nice broad soup bowl. And you just take some pasta, put it on the bottom of the bowl. Now, you don't wanna put like, a, like you're having spaghetti because guess what, it's gonna to be too many because this is filling. So about like that would be fine. Now, you're gonna load your chili all over the pasta. Just like that. Oh, I tell you what, I wish you could smell this. 
I wish you were here and you could smell this because look at the cheese coming off the plate. Oh boy. Now, that in itself would be great. We are not done yet because next, after we do that, then we're going to add some more cheddar cheese. We just, that was a garnish there, it wasn't very much. Now you sprinkle the cheddar cheese as much as you want. Remember, this stuff's going to melt and it adds another. Actually, these are layers of flavor that we're doing with this, okay? And then, this is the end of the road here, which is fabulous. This is sour cream. Use a low fat if you want to, whatever. But you want to put a dollop of that on the top. And as you let that set, the heat from the chili will begin to melt that and it will go all through your chili. <laughs> I can hardly talk. My mouth is watering so bad. Now, this right here is a lot of food. It really is. Doesn't look like it, but it is. And then, of course, we made our Mexican cornbread. I got to show you what this looks like. This is something that it's not hard to make, but oh my, look how delicious. Isn't it beautiful? Well, we hope that you've uh, enjoyed today's show. And think about chili the next time. Be sure to join us because it just wouldn't be the same without you here at home. We'll see you then. Furnishings provided by Levin Furniture, featuring Lane's Country Living Collection. Food provided by Jordan Banana Company, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Travosburg, Pennsylvania. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Thank you for watching. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.